The first one is uh, research supporting the infection chain in improving disease management. As John just uh, mentioned, uh, this is a concept where we are trying to put together old ideas with new ones, a more uh, technical thing, uh, and try to put together in this concept and try to see uh, diseases in, in a more in a whole hair approach or just to see the whole movie or the whole picture of the of the disease. So this is uh, all about about this presentation. Okay, where to target for improved disease management? So this is a very easy game that we play with diseases and uh, it's, it's really easy to understand and really easy to explain. We need to minimize exposure and we need to maximize immunity. So we use uh, several tools in order to do it. First, in order to minimize exposure, we work a lot with biosecurity. There is a lot of examples where we uh, try to, to keep the, the infection pressure of the system we don't want to introduce new diseases or we don't want to introduce new strains of different diseases. The other way to minimize exposure is flow uh, management. We know that it's very important uh, what we do. This is a very basic, this is the ABC of a strain production. We know that uh, doing a good flow management, we can reduce this or minimize this exposure. So it's very easy to understand, easy to explain, but in some cases in the field, you see that uh, there is a, a lot of uh, improvement or opportunity for improvement in this, in this uh, topic. We can use antimicrobials in order to minimize exposure. And uh, uh, we can have a, a, like, a, a, we can put together all these elements in order to have a good, um, a strategy to minimize exposure. The other thing or the other point is to maximize immunity. If we minimize exposure, what we do in maximizing immunity is gonna work better. So it's, it's something that we need to do in, in a, um, as a team, going in the same direction, to minimize the exposure to maximize and maximize immunity. What we do in order to maximize immunity, we have several tools. The first one is vaccination. We know that this is the artificial way to maximize immunity. We do it. We need to understand um, what is the best way to use this tool in order to have the better benefit. Acclimation is very important to maximize immunity because it's, 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 it's uh, the very first time where we need to think in this uh, whole process. When we humanize an animal, we know that uh, if this is going to be a, a, a reproductive animal, we, we know that this animal is going to live for several years. So we need to understand what is the best way and the, uh, and the very beginning of that animal that this acclimation is the best uh, time to do it. We know that. And lactation management and uh, proper uh, nutrition, other kind of uh, tool management that's going to help us in order to, to maximize immunity. So. When we're talking about to get the benefit of uh, how we manage the disease, we need to think in this game. And the other part of the game is to think a little bit different, to think you know, the whole picture is, is that we call infection chain, prevention chain. Okay, uh, a result in, of improvement disease uh, management. So what we are looking for is uh, successful and improving disease management. We can expect a fewer clinical signs, so we are looking for that. So respiratory and reproductive, several of them, all of them, we are trying to put down all these in, uh, clinical manifestation. We uh, look for improved production parameters, uh, therefore economic improvements also we are looking for. So it's, it's, it's a game, so it's really uh, what it's going on in the industry. So um, we are looking also for decrease in treatments, individual injection or mass treatments. All that we, uh, we know that is our job when we are dealing a um, uh, clinical problem or when we are preparing or designing our um, disease uh, management protocols. Okay, now um, we talk about 
what is the game or what is the way to see or what we are trying to set up as a new way to think in automatic when we talk about every disease, its uh, infection prevention chain, is the whole hair approach. Uh, for example, if we are thinking in mycoplasma, uh, most of the time if we think in clinical science, coughing, long lesions, in finishing animals, but uh, when we see the whole picture of mycoplasma, we need to see what's going on or what happened maybe one, one year later or one year before that. So if I have clinical science mycoplasma today, I need to think what happened maybe uh, one year before when I was doing acclimatization for uh, those yields. So what is this concept about is first we need to understand that we are working in chain. We have this production chain that is a start in a guild source, continues in guild development. After that, we have the saw herd. So we have uh, piglets, we need to finish, output to market. So everything starts in guilds, and that finish when we sell uh, animals. So it's a long way. It's that we call production cycle. We can call it also um, production chain, okay? When uh, after, through this production chain, we have this infection chain. So we have horizontal transmission in yields coming from the yield source. And the yield development, we still have in this horizontal transmission in yields. When we introduce these yields to the sour herd, we have this horizontal transmission. At this point, we have another kind of transmission that is vertical transmission. So as you can see, here we have this vertical figure also between sour herd and far away uh, piglets. Uh, so in that point, we are talking about a different epidemiological event that we call vertical transmission. After that, going through the, 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 the production chain, we have wind to finish animals. At that point, as we, uh, we continue talking about horizontal transmission again. When we sell animals, we're still talking about horizontal transmission. So there fell different epidemiological events throughout the whole production chain. So at that point, if we are thinking in an uh, infection chain, we need to think in a prevention chain. So if I have epidemiological events in the gills, I need to do something there. So we start working with uh, minimize exposure and maximize immunity in the gill, in the gill source and also in gill development. The same thing is so hurt. So I'm gonna apply the same thing, minimize exposure and maximize immunity in something really specific in the cell herd. So at that point, in the connection between cell herd and piglets, it's, a, it's that we call uh, epidemiologically vertical transmission. We have this vertical transmission management that is very important because it's right in the middle of this process. So after that, when we have piglets, we're still working in minimize exposure, maximize immunity. For example, we can use a vaccine on a piglet, but before that, we should do a lot of things in order to, max, to minimize exposure, maximize immunity. We need to finish the same thing until we uh, send animals to market. So at this point, we have this production chain. We need to understand the infection chain of the disease in order to understand the prevention chain of the disease, so it's it's a it, it's a it's a game. So is this what we call the whole hair approach? This is and um, this applies for a lot of diseases. It's not only for first virus, for example. So what is the previous research supporting the infection chain concept? There are a lot of information, and as I told you before, this is old information and new information with we're trying to put together in order to have this idea. We would like to have this uh, idea as a, an um, automatic set of mind when we deal a disease. First, we can go back until 1965, so long time ago. But it was the first time when uh, in, in the literature it's, uh, we can see something related to the chain thinking in the infection of a disease. So the phenomenon of suppressed respiratory disease in the litter 
of other souls, other souls. So we have Goodwin making this correlation that the piglets coming from old souls they uh, have uh, uh, less respiratory disease compared to gills, piglets coming from gills. So it was the first the first time when somebody was thinking and and, and it was published that there there is a, a chain of events in epidemiology. And, and, and also in control of the diseases. So after that, we have several of information or uh, publication. We have the, the one that's very, it's very important and in the industries, Medicare, we need to obtain pigs free from pathogens, pathogens endemic in the heart of uh, origin. So uh, this is another important paper saying that uh, we have this connection between what's going on in the soul heart and what will happen in the nursery of Finnish animals. More information uh, uh, here in the U.S. now, it's talking about the fact of uh, all in all out, what you do in the animal flow in order to minimize uh, exposure. So it's, again, it's trying to connect several links of this infection chain. More information about this uh, uh, way to control disease, not only using a vaccine or antibiotics, is how to do uh, different um, things in order to, to uh, modulate what's going on in the soil heart in infection pressure in order to get a benefit in the in nursery and finishing. This is uh, in the mid of the 90s where Pierce was coming. It was becoming a very important disease. So the porcine respiratory disease complex, as the population important. So at that, at that point of time, when people were thinking a reproductive and respiratory problem, they were, uh, Scott was thinking, okay, maybe the, the central element is the soil hair stability, and why the soil hair is unstable, maybe for guilt. So he was uh, connecting guilt, soil hair, and respiratory problems in piglets. So that's uh, 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 a very, um, nice way to, to have an example of how he was thinking in chain, in this infecting chain. Uh, more information about how to connect different dots in the, in the, in the, in the production uh, chain with Harris. We have Carlos Pijuan, 2005, talking about mycoplasma. So it was a good disease in order to, to have this uh, information together in order to, to try to think a little bit different. It was a good moment to think a little bit different mycoplasma. Everybody was looking only piglet. So he decided to think a little bit uh, in a wider way. And uh, after that, uh, Carlos Pijuan continued working. And uh, as a student of Carlos Pijuan, uh, I, uh, we developed all this information regarding the new way to think of uh, regarding mycoplasma, so trying to to understand more all the epidemiological features of the agent throughout this uh, production chain. So there is a lot of information. There is a very solid literature supporting that uh, we, can, we, can, we should think in this way, in this infection chain, prevention chain. Okay, uh, what are the examples where the industry has adopted the infection chain and prevention chain? So, or we can say that um, there are several examples where we can see that the infection chain, prevention chain uh, concept can fit perfectly with something we have been doing for the last 20, 30 years, something like that. So it's something that it, it is there. It's there, but not for all, all the diseases. We have been thinking that for just a set of diseases. For example, Ascarids, uh, E. coli, rotavirus, Clostridium, Bordetella, Pasteurella, APP, Pierce. Pierce is a very good example. Actually, I can tell you that uh, most of this concept uh, it's, is done in peers, and it's very clear, um, and it's, uh, uh, the mindset of the people controlling pits is in automatic. If I need to control peers virus in my, in my farm, in my system, I need to think in a whole hair approach. I need to think what they're gonna do in guilds, or what they're gonna do in the source of the guilds, in guilds, in sows, in piglets. If I don't work in this um, very integrated way, if I don't work in this whole hair approach, I don't think I'm gonna be successful with peers. So it's something that we are taking for that. Uh, we want to create this concept in order to have an automatic way to think when we face a disease. 
Uh, another uh, example where the industry, uh, or what the industry has been doing and fits perfectly with this concept is Ascarite. And this is a very good example because it's very basic. When we think in how to control a parasite, we need to think that we need to control this cycle of the parasite. If we don't do it, we don't succeed. So it's similar with mycoplasma, or similar with APP, similar with other agents. If we don't think in all these infection chain, I don't think that it's going to be easy to succeed. So this is the way that we are trying to propose with this uh, uh, new concept. It's a new concept covering all ideas. So uh, we are trying to do that. So I think is 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 for this slide. Uh, I'm going to stop a little bit. If you remember the second uh, literature review I used in order to support this concept, we, it was the Alexander paper about uh, medicated early weaning. So it was the beginning of a revolution in in, in swine industry uh, with uh, good things, bad things. But at the end, we have a new way to produce animals. So uh, it's interesting to to understand. Why in this paper they, they were thinking with this um, chain thinking? So they have several objectives. Uh, they have intervention. They, they have. They were looking for epidemiological effects in this intervention. So they, they, uh, the main objective was to maximize cell immunity, minimize cell excretion, and minimize colonization. So they do some. They did several interventions: cell so vaccination, medication, early weaning in order to get uh, this minimized vertical transmission. So that was the goal. But it was half of the goal. The other one was to minimize colonization by piglet medication in order to minimize this horizontal transmission. So it's very clear they were thinking in this, they were using this chain thinking in order to modulate what was happening in the cell herd in order to have a benefit in the cell herd, in the piglet, sorry. It's uh, more um, data and more research in early, uh, uh, in early winning. So we have this early vertical transmission work. Uh, it was uh, done later uh, here in the US. So it's, there is a, uh, several very clear uh, uh, information supporting this idea. So Examples where the industry has started to adopt the infection chain and prevention chain pairs, as I told you before, actually, uh, it is it, the perfect fit. It's, uh, it's very clear what we, has, we, ha we need to do to control disease. We, we, we need to have the peers example in order to apply to other diseases. So we understand that if we do a good whole hair approach, we want to succeed, succeed with the peers control, so we're going to have all the uh, economical benefit that we are looking for when we are dealing with a disease. So uh, other diseases where we need to widely adopt, it's mycoplasma is one of those. We have been um, discussing this. The University of Minnesota worked a lot with this idea in 2002 until 2007. Uh, so there was a lot of information, but it's not complete. So we need to still work in order to have this mycoplasma infection chain that I'm going to talk a bit uh, uh, more about that in, this, in my second presentation. There is so much evidence on the importance of infection chain in the role of downstream health effects in pigs in regards to mycoplasma. So it's something that the, we, uh, we need to take advantage of, so we want to continue working that. However, as an industry, we poorly handle mycoplasma and pneumonia and quickly forget how important in the infection chain and prevention chain are for managing the disease in pigs. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the second presentation. So um, all this is a very good example of what we need to do in order to set up a disease in this concept. Uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to spend more time in my second presentation when I work uh, when I'm going to talk about how to manage, uh, how to use this whole hair approach in order to manage the disease, I'm going to use the mycoplasma example. So it's, uh, it's going to be easy for me to explain to you what, what is the main idea of this uh, thing. The most logical next disease to attempt to apply the infection chain, prevention chain concept is PCV2. There is now new information. Uh, 
uh, mostly from uh, Iowa State University saying that the South Herd is it's, it's important what, what's import, what is happening in the South Herd in order to connect that with, uh, with Piglet. So that's the infection chain. Uh, Brian used this the reference to try to uh, give a good example how we can think in infection chain when we are talking about PCV2. There are new information about uh, its involved in sows to pigs in vertical transmission, and also is really involved in, uh, in when we acclimatate a kill. So it's important in the sow herd stability, and also it's important in GD use when we adapt a yield. So it's, it's uh, where we are connecting, or we can connect what's going on in yields, sow herd, and wind animals. So we can connect the infection chain of uh, PCV2. Yeah.